You know what? I, I feel really comfortable where I'm at right now. Obviously, I'm not where I need to be, but where I was in OTAs and, you know, the spring and the summer wasn't a great place as far as, you know, feeling like a rookie, new terminology. Um, but it wasn't even that. It was a little different. You know, I've been in several offenses, you know, had several quarterbacks. Uh, for some reason, the way we do things here, uh, is really different. You know, I've never really been in a no huddle offense. You know, the tempo, you know, it's like le learning a new language because everything is, you know, nonverbal communication. So that was difficult for me. Um, but, you know, we stuck to it. And, you know, I'm in a really comfortable place now. And there's some, some things I still have to uh, figure out. Literally 10 seconds ago, Eli walked in the locker room and took me through five minutes of just throwing things at me, seeing where I was. So, you know, he knows what I can, where I'm at and where I'm not at. And, you know, he's challenging me every second he gets. So um, we'll be where we need to be come week one. How often does that happen? Does he come up to you and sort of test you, I guess, in a way, right? Uh, I can't. It's not like it's it's Eli Manning time. It's whenever, you know, it's, it's weird. Um, often, though, regular, just maybe the first or second time? No, it's just real. It's real spontaneous. I mean, it's 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 uh, it's interesting. It's you know we may be talking about the type of cereal we're going to have, and he may just switch the subject to you know some type of football. You know, so I really can't answer that. You know, literally we just got out of the shower. We had towels on, and he was pretty much half dressed, and he started giving me signals. Brandon, about a week Never or so ago, you had made a 50-50 grab, and I remember you were very happy with it and said you wanted to show your teammates as well as yourself that you could still do that kind of play. Yeah. Have you been making more plays, because it looks like it in practice, that would make you and your teammates smile? Um, yes, you know, but obviously they're overlooked because we have 13 on the other side, and <laughs> he makes Sports Center top five every single day, so, you know, you won't see what Sterling Shepard and – and, and, and Evan is doing it myself. So, you know, um, we have been making some plays all around. And it's fun because when you have a special talent like that on the other side, it brings um, the competition level up. So we even challenge each other in our room. You know, when you have, you know, one of the best players ever, um, he makes everybody on the team great. You had your own candidate for a top play today, though. Yeah, that was pretty special. That was good. But again, you know, like I told him today, we were running gassers. You know, he's not going to keep it easy. You know, I'm going to push him every chance he gets. So, I, you know, I want my little moment, too. So I try to make me a little Odell one-hand catch. Um, but I'll probably make top 20, not top five. <laughs> what have you learned about Odell now that you've been at camp with him, you know, yeah. two weeks? It's probably the most contact you've had with him, I would assume, yeah. in your career. Uh, he's a coach. He really cares about his teammates. We had a guy to go down that, you know, really probably only half the guys on the team know his name. And we – you know, broke down prayer. He had the prayer yesterday, and he's, you know, mentioned him by name. You know, a guy that, you know, nobody probably even realized he went down. Um, you know, a guy that may be a practice squad guy or a scout team guy, a guy maybe on the bubble. You know, he's pulling him to the side, coaching him up. You know, he coaches me up. Sometimes I, you know, I want to say, bro, you know, I'm going on 12 years in the league. Why are you talking to me about, you know, you know where my eyes and my hands are? Uh, but, you know, the guy knows the game. He cares about his teammates. And, you know, really, he's a coach out there. You know, he really understands the game. And I really appreciate how he's trying to get us all better. Brandon, you have mentioned before about Eli. And it's like whenever Eli's time is his time. Does that very unique with you and the quarterback? And does it give you, does it keep you on a certain edge that, you know, you got to, you know, you got to be ready? No, uh, Jay Cutler and I, we, we, we talked a lot because, you know, we had the freedom to change things at the line of scrimmage where it was just him and I, and it was only a few routes, you know. We had a go, a slant, a comeback, and maybe a different wrinkle, depending on who we were playing that week. Fitzpatrick and I, we talked a lot, you know. So kind of similar, but this offense is all, I mean, pretty much, I mean, a lot of it is nonverbal. And um, with Eli, you know, he's so detailed. He's probably the most detailed quarterback I've been around. You know, he knows what he wants and how he wants it. You know, it's like, you know, I, it took me 
up until two weeks ago to get this one route down. You know, he threw a ball into the ground and, you know, I was two steps off, literally two steps off. And, you know, he pulled me to the side and just kept coaching me and walking me through it. But, you know, any other quarterback would have been, it would have been, it would have been perfect, right? But this guy was like, no, it's two steps. Um, so he's special. He's really detailed. There was a play today where you went in to the middle and he threw the ball out. Was that what's one of the plays he was talking to you about? Yeah, so there's several ways we can get to different routes. And I'd say, I I, asked, I thought he did it on purpose. I think he, did, he knew I didn't have that one down. And, you know, he's like, you got to know it, you know. So um, I won't make that mistake again, you know. But, you know, there's certain things that we've, we've really been connecting on and built some chemistry on. And, you know, the, the DBs know. So he wanted to switch up, you know, our communication so they didn't get a, a tip. Um, and I, I had never seen that one before I told him. So, but now I got it. Given how you and Eli are still developing chemistry and you only had a cameo in the game the other night, how many game snaps do you think you and Eli need together in the preseason to get where you want to go? Well, look, I'm not, we're not going to be where him and Odell is right now. I mean, they know each other so well. It takes times. It could take years. But I think we'll be in good position where, you know, I can help pull coverage off of Odell. I can make his job easier. I can, you know, make sure the middle is a little bigger for Sterling and Evan. Uh, we'll be fine. Um, we'll have... We'll have some good chemistry this year, I can say that, but I can't put, uh, you know, any timetable on it. Brandon, what's your reaction to that? You told you told him that you know, obviously had something to say about you again. What was your general reaction to what he said? I wasn't surprised, but, you know, um, there's so much good energy here, and the environment is amazing. We don't really have time. I don't have time to go back to that. You know, it's that's that's dead. It's dead. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, I think before the play, he he went to uh, um, David Tyree and, and told him he said, "Watch this catch," and he did it. Uh, it it's a really difficult catch. He jumped too high. I mean, he jumped he jumped too early. He was getting pushed, you know, and he used his inside hand that was you know in, by the defender and still made the grab. It's it's a, it's only a, it's only a catch that he can make. I've never seen it before. Brandon, you talked about the, the weapons that you guys have and being a decoy for Odell. Are you okay with maybe not catching as many balls as maybe Odell or Sterling or anybody else? Well, we don't like to call it decoys. We're not decoys. You know, obviously we run route combinations where we pull coverage for each other, but, you know, it's, you know, it's football. It's a team sport. So there's going to be times where Odell is going to be you know, crushing it, and there's going to be guys on the other side, just, you know, just going to be doing their job and may not get a lot of um, reps or a lot of action in the passing game. And there's going to be moments where they're doubling him, tripling him, and it feels going to be wide open for us. So, you know, you guys got to understand when you're looking at football, just look at some of the great combinations. You know, there's, you know, we say there's only one ball, but there's a, there's a, it's enough for everyone, right? And, you know, I know Dale said yesterday it's all about that banner, and it really is. You know, we obviously, you know, guys want to do some things, you know, as an individual. But at the end of the day, when you're winning, um, and 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 you understand that eventually it's going to swing back your way, you, you'll be happy. So we'll we'll be fine. And you know, when when our egos get kind of out of check, we'll just reel each other back in. No, I've always had that outlook. So when I I played running back my entire life, and when I switched to receiver my freshman year in high school, my uncle pulled me to the side and he said, um, my uncle Kenny Times, great, great football guy, uh, had his little stand in the NFL for a little bit, went to the University of Florida. His, his kids went to the University of Florida, a uh, big football family. And he pulled me to the side. You know, it was probably like 7.30 at night. The lights was on. We was playing street football. And he said, so let me teach you something. If you want to play wide receiver, you got to realize that you're only as great as the guy on the other side of you. And I've always had that mentality when I played with Javon Walker, and I was just my second year in the league. And then the third year, I had Eddie Royal. I had 104 catches. Eddie had 91. And then I went on to Miami, you know, and we struggled a little bit down there. And then I went to um, I went to the Chicago. I've been to so many teams, I'm forgetting. 
But I went to Chicago, and it was myself, Alshon Jeffrey, and Martellus Bennett, you know, 100 catches, 90-something catches, 80-something catches. And then, you know, Eric Decker and I did something special, you know, where Deck had – he could have had 100 catches if he played the whole year. I had 100, but we both had almost 30 touchdowns together. So, you know, you know, you want a dog on the other side if you're a number one receiver because you're the only guy that can play. You know, they're going to double you and triple you, and it's going to be hard to get the ball. Have you, have you developed a close relationship with McAdoo, or you know, is he receptive to the questions? I saw you out on the field kind of asking him a lot. He said earlier you're a terrific communicator. I'm just curious what that relationship has been like. It's great. You know, he's always checking in, and, you know, today it was more of getting on me. It was the first time really getting on me. He wanted me to be more aggressive to the ball and on a fade, you know, been a little fancy, and you know, on those balls a little bit. And, you know, so he was just walking me through the timing and, you know, what Eli sees and, and how he's, you know, he's processing things. Um, so, you know, it's been great, man, to have a coach that, you know, it's going to hold everyone accountable. You know, he holds Eli accountable. He holds, you know, scout team guy accountable. He, he holds me accountable. Um, and then he's also, you know, there for you when you need to talk to him. You know, so it's kind of special what he has going on here. You talking about the fade that you caught? That one and the one I missed on the other side, there was, the timing was off a little bit. He felt like I should have went up and attacked it, which I should have. Um, so he, he felt like I was playing a little small, told right. me be what you're supposed to be.